Well, brothers and sisters, as you no doubt noticed from the scripture reading just before this, uh, the passage that we're looking at today is uh, quite a lengthy passage. But we wanted to get the whole story, pretty much, of Stephen. Now, one of the things that we didn't get in there was how Stephen had been chosen just before this to serve as a uh, deacon among the people. Uh, that is, they were they're finding that some of the people in the congregation or in the congregations, as the case may be, were being overlooked. Some of the widows and orphans and the poor, uh, and so they appointed deacons to help in the taking care of the various people within the congregation. And of course, this is a very important aspect of life together as Christ followers. But we wanted to look at this uh, story. This is the post-Easter story. This is the post-Pentecost story, actually. Uh, but also, it is a story that is particularly relevant for our world and kind of brings us, in a way, back to our series about Bible basics. Although, instead of looking at the Old Testament, which we have been doing for quite a while, uh, a number of months ago, uh, we are now looking, of course, at the New Testament. And Stephen's story is one of those basic and important Bible stories, not only for the content of what Stephen says, but also for, uh, for us to understand his character and for us to see in Stephen ourselves. This is really important. There are lots and lots of biblical uh, heroes and patriarchs, and we've talked uh, on numerous occasions about how one of the refreshing things about biblical characters is that they are so real. There, there aren't fakely good people in the scriptures. E even people like Moses, who Stephen talks about quite extensively, even Moses had an anger problem, and he was not someone who uh, always behaved perfectly. All of our biblical heroes, except for Jesus himself, were, were human beings like us and were sinful. Jesus, of course, was totally a human being, fully human and fully divine, but he, unlike the rest of us, he was without sin. Stephen fits in the category of the rest of us. Stephen was a guy, a person, just like everybody else. But he was seized by the power of the Holy Spirit, and his life was transformed, changed into something uh, tremendous, something that was eloquent, something that was full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit and full of passion and a willingness to risk absolutely everything for the sake of the kingdom. Here's Stephen. Stephen, who is full of God's grace and power, the Bible says, and does wondrous and wonders, great wonders and miraculous signs among the people, and he starts to face opposition. Now, you could see him potentially saying to himself, or having other people say to him, hey, look, Stephen, you're doing great work helping to take care of the widows and the orphans among the people. Maybe you just need to step back a bit, cool it a bit with the evangelistic messages. Maybe you just, you know, rein it in a little bit, right? Don't, don't deny Jesus as your Savior by any stretch of the imagination, but just pull it back a little bit so that you don't face this trouble. But Stephen can't do that. Stephen won't do that. Instead, he boldly shares the gospel message, not only with the people around him, the people he comes into contact with, but when he is seized by the Sanhedrin, he boldly shares the gospel with them in, in a way where he, is, he doesn't pull any punches on them. 
He tells them very clearly who they are and what they have done. And it brings up a couple of questions for us. One of the big questions that it brings up for us is the question of martyrdom. You see, Stephen, of course, was the first martyr for the faith after Jesus himself. The first one to die at the hands of the Jewish leaders of the time. But it brings up for us the question of, are we martyrs? And I don't mean that in a glib or, or facetious sort of way. I, I seriously mean to ask this question because we do face some persecution in this world in Canada. I mean, we have a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom to worship God. But there are times when people around us uh, uh, persecute us in some way for our faith. We suffer for it, whether it's in our work environment, whether it's shunning, or whether it's mockery, or whether it's uh, even going to the point of not being eligible for certain promotions, whether it's uh, like we have seen in, in some provinces in Canada, particularly in Quebec, where, where people are not allowed to wear certain religious symbols uh, in certain jobs. We see this in, uh, you know, the Canada Summer Jobs Grant that we had uh, a, a couple of years ago that was a real struggle. Um, and, and, and in many other places. But we are not martyrs. We are not martyrs. There are people in this world who are, or who have become, rather, martyrs. There are places in this world where people are persecuted, where they are suffering, where they are killed even for their faith. But thankfully, we do not have to experience that. But that, of course, then begs the question, do we behave like martyrs? And that has a whole different sort of connotation. You know, it's interesting that Stephen, the very first martyr, doesn't act like a martyr. <laughs> Not, not, not in the way that we think about it today, right? When, you, when the saying is out there that someone is behaving like a martyr, then we, we, we say that they're walking around going, "Oh, I'm so good, and look how everybody picks on me. It's not fair. It's unkind, and it's a whining sort of thing." Or a manipulation sort of thing where we are trying to get people to do what we want them to do because our lives are so bad. It's a, it, we even have a word for it, a martyr complex, right? A phrase, martyr complex, like, oh, everybody's always picking on me. <laughs> but it's funny, you don't see any of that in Stephen. He does not behave like that at all all. Instead, he seemingly gladly goes to his death. Not that he has a, not that he has a suicide wish or a, a, a death wish, but that he's boldly preaching about the Savior that he loves, and he is willing to accept the consequences of that. And so, here, we are not martyrs because, A, we're not dying for our faith, unlike some people in this world. And we are also not martyrs as in we have no reason to behave as if we have a martyr complex. Even if we were persecuted for our faith, even if we were facing death for our faith, we ought to behave like Stephen. So we're not martyrs. But there is something of Stephen in us, or the call 
that Stephen received in us. You see, at the end of the Gospels, when Jesus is ascending into heaven, he gives his disciples the Great Commission. He tells them to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded. Jesus promised that he will be with us to the end of the age is, is a true and significant one. But the call for us to share the gospel is also a true and significant one. And we may ask ourselves, how are we going to share that good news? How are we going to spread that good news today? Well, there's lots of ways we can share that good news. If the Holy Spirit is in us, and if we are submitting ourselves to the Holy Spirit, then God will help us to know what those ways are in which we can serve and in which we can uh, share the good news. See, God has promised in advance that he has laid out good things for us to do. And that's no less true now, when we're stuck at home more than we were before than it was before. Brothers and sisters, we have been called to live our lives in service to the King, not afraid of death, not afraid of persecution, but like Stephen, bold in preaching and sharing the good news of the love of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the example of Stephen, one of the first deacons and the first martyr for the faith after yourself, Jesus. Lord, help us to be more like Stephen. Not that Stephen was perfect, O oh God, but help us to live out faith boldly, regardless of consequences. Lord, may we share your love in all that we do. And Lord, if we're struggling to figure out how we can do that in this day and age, Lord, please open our hearts and minds to see the good deeds that you have planned in advance for us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.